Hello everyone, welcome back to the second video in this quick little series, creating a site-to-site -site IPsec tunnel terminating two loopback interfaces on the FortiGate. My name is Devin Adams and I am a Fortinet certified trainer at Dynamic and uh, yeah, I actually had a request from one of my viewers on how to do this and I, I normally don't skip in line in my videos but uh, he really wanted to see how this was done. So uh, in the last video we created the loopback interfaces on the two FortiGates, alright, and we kind of pinged those loopback interfaces to test that they were up. Uh, but what KC wanted to do is is make those loopbacks the endpoint of a, a VPN tunnel using IPsec. Now, I personally don't know when you'd want this, but uh, it's definitely possible. So let's go ahead and do it. So the goal of this video is to create that tunnel and then test to see if we can't reach the loopbacks between the IPsec tunnels themselves. So uh, let's go on to our local FortiGate. All right. And we're already logged in from last time. All right. Now this loopback interface is going to be the endpoint of our VPN tunnel. And I'm going to take advantage of the wizard to do this. So I'm going to go down to my uh, VPN. And I'm going to say IPsec tunnel. Then I'm going to say create new. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? You're too local, actually too remote. So that's to the remote site. We don't have any natting in between, so we hit next. All right, and this is going to be the public IP address of the remote FortiGate. Now, in my test environment, 10.200 is what I use as my fake WAN IP addresses. So just pretend that that's the public IP address of the remote FortiGate. And then our pre-share key to keep the tunnel super secret. All right, then we hit next. And here, we're going to say, you know what, the loopback is the end of this tunnel and that's the only IP address that's on that loopback interface just like on our remote side we made one with the IP address of 2.2.2.2 with the slash 32 alright and then we go ahead and hit create and believe it or not the FortiGate is going to go ahead and make the logical tunnel it's going to write the firewall policies and it's also going to do the static routes so easy peasy lemon squeezy let's just review that super quick so for example uh, to tell it to push the traffic out the VPN tunnel, if we go to our network tab and we go to static routes, all right, and we open up this bad boy, there it is. All right, and if we kind of hover above it, you can see the IP address and the address group. I know it looks a little bit wonky there. That's brand new with 6.2, by the way. But essentially created an, an, an address group with the uh, two remote remote subnet one and I promise you guys that that's going to be the two 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 so it's saying if you're trying to get to two 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 go ahead and push it down the VPN tunnel all right and what else it did for us on our policy and objects IP4 policy we have a loopback to the logical VPN tunnel and the VPN tunnel to the loopback allowing the traffic to flow between the two all right so the wizard does that all for you. It's pretty pretty awesome. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do it on the remote side. So let's get into our remote FortiGate here. All right, it's still logged in from last time, and we're gonna go to our wizard. Okay, there we go. We have nothing, so we're gonna say create new, and this one's gonna be to local. All right. Then the public IP address of our local FortiGate. All right, not too bad. The same pre-shared key. Hopefully I don't fat finger it. But here we're going to say, hey, use the loopback I created. And on the other side, it's going to be that 1.1.1.1 with the slash 32. And it's going to do the same over on a remote side. It's going to build up the static routes. It's going to build up the firewall policies to allow through. So. Uh, let's go ahead and test it. So essentially, guys, we've we've built the tunnel. Let's see if the tunnel comes up. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go down to monitor. We're going to go to IPsec. There's our tunnel, and I'm going to right click and say, bring up. And as you can see, the tunnel is up. All right. So now, if you try to do anything from here to test it, because we did allow ping access through the loopback and we tested it but if we just open up the console and from our FortiGate try to ping 
1.1.1.1, I promise you it's not going to work. Oops, maybe because I didn't put execute. Dar -dar -dar. Okay, it's not going to work. And the reason why is because it uses the interface that you're on right now as the source interface of the FortiGate. So in other words, guys, it thinks that it's coming from a 10.0.2 network. Well, we didn't have a firewall rule for that. We only did it through the loopback. So we have to set our our ping option to our loopback interface. And I'll show you how to do that right now to test it. All right, maybe. Get out of here. <laughs> As I just closed the whole bloody thing by accident. Let me let me load that back up. Sorry, guys. Or did I just kill it permanently for good? I'll do it on this side. <laughs> I don't know why my Docker there crashed. That was a GNS thing. That was not a a FortiGate thing. So, and it looks like that one's. Oh, it's just my computer being super slow, guys. It was wigging out on me. All right. Yeah, cute. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. Thanks for embarrassing me, computer. All right, here we go. We'll just be back on the remote side. So we'll do an execute ping options. And let me do a question mark here. And as you can see, the source is going to be the source interface that we're logged in from. So here it thinks that it's port 3 because we're 10.0.2 coming in from there. So, But instead, I'm going to say ping options source. And we're going to say that it's coming from the source of 2.2.2.2. All right. Now when I do an execute ping and I do 1.1.1.1, as you can see, it identifies with the loopback interface as it does that ping, and therefore the ping is successful. All right, so when you're testing this, just remember you have to identify yourself from coming from the interface of the loopback, or it's just simply not going to have the firewall policy to, to work. So um, here's another example, too. Let's go ahead and do it on the local side just for completeness. All right. All right, so the tunnel is up, but the only way for us to come from a, a loopback is from the FortiGate itself. So here we go. All right, and so I'm going to do an execute ping options source, and I'm going to say like I'm coming from 1.1.1.1. So now it's going to look up the firewall rules if I'm coming from the logical loopback interface when I do an execute ping. 2.2.2.2. And as you guys can see, those are routable through the IPsec tunnel, and it is using the loopbacks to terminate both ends. Now, uh, <laughs> cute. Now your computer will reboot. Get out of here. All right. So, Casey, I hope that was helpful. I hope that's what you're looking for. Like I said, if you want to add in the comments field some applications for creating a loopback between a VPN tunnel, I'm pretty sure they're out there. I'm just ignorant in the fact of a, a really good example of why to do so. Um, let me know. But, guys, that was it. We successfully created the loopback interfaces. We created a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. And then we were able to ping the traffic once we set the source IP address. So... All right, Subin, I hope that was helpful, and I hope uh, that answered your question, and I'll see you guys next time. So take care.